for the second historical linguistics challenge. I'm glad it's me and not someone else. Oh my goodness. Oh, I see something that looks promising. Oh no. Okay. Rising Rose with the killer advice that'll make a winner out of all of us. Hydrate and stretch. Hello, YouTube. I'm back in Peru. I don't know if you can tell, it's super sunny. I'm wearing short sleeves in April, and so it must mean I'm somewhere not in, um, not in Southern Ontario. And indeed I am not, I am in Lima, Peru, and we are going to be working on the second historical linguistics challenge today. We are going to see what Team B has come up with. And so if you haven't seen one of these before, basically the premise is we get um, a selection of cognate sets that are all uh, made up by our wonderful community. And our job together is to reconstruct the proto-language that gave rise to all of these uh, cognates. And so this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if, you have, if you saw the earlier episode, or the earlier, I think we did eight episodes of them. Um, yeah, I got demolished, frankly. And so I've been warned that this one's gonna be harder, so why don't we just see what's happening? Hello everyone, let's get going into the, now let's just see, does, is this going to work properly? If I go into the side webcam, yes, okay. And it says I'm currently signed in as me, that's good to know. I'm glad it's me and not someone else. Okay, okay, we need to zoom in a bit. Team A1, yeah, it's, it's, it's Discord 1, colon 0. All right, let's. Let's take a look at this. So what do we have? OK, so we have five languages. And we have how many sets of cognates or are they cognates necessarily? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it looks like we have five sets of cognates with semantic shifts. Team B is in the chat. Team B, it's glad. Uh, it's glad. I'm glad. I don't know what it is. It's wonderful, and I'm glad to see you here. Um, so you can just sort of, you know, do this kind of motion and, and uh, cackle or what have you as you see us go through this. So we have how many cognate sets here? We have from line four to line 53. So we've got a good set of cognate sets and our task is going to be to reconstruct the the proto-language. So why don't we get started using our our technique from last time we are going to what I'm going to do do I have the authority to do this? I think so. Um, I'm going to assign a number to each of these words I'm going to use the magic of spreadsheets to zoom down so we can refer back to things. So we have 50 cognate sets. I'm going to arrange things nicely here. And I'm going to hide this row so we have a little bit more screen real estate. I'm going to take a cup of a swig of tea. Time will tell. If it's as hot as it was last week, the tea will prove to have been a poor choice. All right. So let's see if we can squeeze a little bit more room out of this. Yes, we can. Good. So that everyone can see as much as possible. And we need to start collecting some correspondences. So I am going to task you, chat, with pointing out anything you find interesting. Any leads you want to follow up on? I will start going, but I will periodically look over at the chat. And um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Okay, what is something that looks relatively simple? A nice way to start is initial consonants, because we only have to worry about the environment on one side rather than two. Um, so why don't we take a look at some initial consonant that is that is maintained across the board. 
So this is interesting because it looks like we have some some morphology going on in number one. So we won't use that to start with. Uh, let's see. G -j no, okay, that's going to be a bit more complicated. Oh, I see something that looks promising. This uh, cognate set in 17. Oops, don't do that. Oh, control Z. Um, this noun that means one in a collective, it means pile, it means small thing, and it means grain. And so we have this. So let's make some word environment. And so the languages, I think these are the names of the languages. Um, let's call them, so we're not pronouncing them every time. Let's call them A, B, C, D, E. But really they are loading, loading, um, niemarop, ludinguk, kom to push, and tinglucho. I did justice to all of their names there. All right, so let's get this sorted out. You cannot see very much on this other spreadsheet, so I'm gonna pull this across. Uh, oh, I'll wait. I'll wait. We're always dealing with the uh, the lack of real estate here. Lots of these can be small. Okay. So let's see. I see a, uh, a suggestion for nasalization. We'll look at that second. So we have in word 14, initially, before a vowel. I'm just going to, as a way of making this a bit easier, um, collapse vowels and consonants for now. We'll have occasion to separate them out, but we don't have very much to go on yet. So this is a good way to start. The general environment and we have L L no sorry we have L and nothing L L L oops and you know what I remembered I have an IPA keyboard now thanks to you thanks to the community the chat you it's not just the chat it's the discord it's everyone who's been suggesting different ways of, of typing IPA more easily and um, I just want to thank you for that because now we have the ability to do things like, um, I don't know, I'm not going to try and do it live because I'll probably make a mistake. Um, but it's something like where, and the problem also is that I'm on a Latin American keyboard so some things are in different spots. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we've got here. So we can do things like this, or this. Can you see what's going on here? It's wonderful. Or this, or this. Whoa, okay. So IPA keyboard engaged. I'm gonna put that off to the side so I can see which symbols do what. Okay, so here we have um, initial L, and let's see if we have anything else like that just before we move on. We have 14, we also have 13, um, which looks kind of similar. Here we have a similar environment. Oh dear, now I don't know how to, <laughs> I think it's, there we go, okay. I'm struggling. I see tone markings. I just I just want to put in an underscore and then a V. Good, excellent. L and then we have nothing. We'll put a zero for that to, to make our lives easier. And okay. So that's good. Let's see what else. So we have Let's stick with the initial. So let's keep the nasalization. Let's put an idea down here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll tackle the nasalization soon. 
What else? We have some initial nasals in 21, 22, and 23. Let's do that. So, oh, we're going to make our... Okay. How do I make it accept this? V? Well, some things become easier and some things become harder. Isn't that just life? And we have, let's see, what. how can I type this? This is like a fun, let's type IPA with Colin. Um, where is the, I don't know where that is. Okay, so this may not immediately be more convenient, but I, I, I am confident that the benefits will eventually uh, show themselves. So, um... I don't know where the velar nasal is on this keyboard layout. So I'm going to do what I always do, which is copy and paste. Yay! So there we go. Copying and pasting. Technology's our friend. So we have the velar nasal here. Um, in 21, it looks like we have some interesting things going on in 21. Because... Our language B has something that looks morphologically, morphologically more complex. Or, as Sutton just pointed out, we could be dealing with the a wholesale loss of um, of final, mm, not final syllables necessarily. Well, some some kind of unstressed syllable loss. So let's assume that, oh, actually I know how to do this one in the, this is, there we go. Are you proud of me? Um, okay, so, and then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this over. Uh, for, for D, we have mm, something very strange going on, so I'm not totally sure what that is yet. Uh, and for... Uh, e, we have the uvular nasal. And I'm going to copy paste that because I don't know where it is in the layout. Progress. It's, it's, it's two steps forward, one step back. Yeah, Sauten, it seems like we, we are losing syllables left and right, no pun intended, um, in branch A. In Lodin. Um, let's see what else we can do. We have velar nasal in 22 and 23, and it's in similar environments in both, so we'll... I almost feel like one of those 70s keyboard players, because I've got so many different keyboards and things going on here, like Rick Wakeman. I don't know if anyone knows who Rick Wakeman is, but I feel like Rick Wakeman here. I've got all my keyboards I'm doing IPA over here and I should be wearing a cape um, real real 70s kids know what I'm talking about all right so we've got the velar nasal here and here we've got nothing we've got a loss uh, a whole well th this there's no reflex of this um, of this proto form in language B, uh, but in language for for form twenty three, we have the palatal nasal, uh, and then we have uvular nasals here. We have loss and the velar nasal here, and we have no surviving form and the velar nasal here. Yeah, so what's weird is in, in branch D, as Connor points out, we have the loss of the velar nasal, except in 23. But what's the difference between, 20, uh, between 21 and 22 on the one hand and 23 on the other hand? And the thing that pops out to me is that we have, a, um, we have back vowels in uh, 21 and 22, and we have a front vowel in 23. I wonder if this will end up um, being an interesting avenue to explore. 
Ah, yeah, you gotta stretch. You gotta hydrate. Rising Rose with the killer advice that'll make a winner out of all of us. Hydrate and stretch. Okay. Okay, what's next? So I'm gonna write down... Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> Let's see if I can win us a bit more screen space for some notes. Good. So loss before back. I think that's all the all the space we're gonna get. There we go. Lost before back vowels. Treat them as a loan into, okay, yeah. If there is a, um, if there are loan words, we are truly doomed. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay, I've got to use the Mac keyboard for this. Um, all right, let's, let's do some more. So what else do we have? We have another velar nasal in 26. Maybe we can make progress on that. So it's in the same kind of environment, broadly speaking. It is velar nasal across the board, which is interesting and something we haven't seen before. Oh, apologies. The uh, aspect ratio of this monitor doesn't quite match up to what you see. Um, so 26, we have velar nasals across the board. And in, let's see if we can collect any more of these. Any kind of velar no, okay. So last time we started kind of with the obstruents, let's start with the sonorants this time. Let's see if we can work out the initial um, the initial sonorants. So that means we're looking for things. We're looking for nasals. We're looking for liquids. And I see we have ah moon truther moon truther points at something very interesting here. We have the name of the language itself in uh, row twenty three. Niemarop. Niemarop, correct speech. Interesting. Oh, I, can I just pause to point out how cool these uh, cognate sets are with their semantic divergences? We have something that has good, correct speech, moral, true, and repair. That's very cool. Okay, so let's do, let's take a look at the labial nasal. So in 18, we have I don't know what it wants me to do in order to get the pound sign. Um, we have um, we have actually M across the board, so that's exciting. Uh, hand, glove, touch, use, arm, hand. Then we have the same thing going on in 19. So I feel like we're getting a foothold here. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this down. M, 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 M. And then in 20, we have the coronal nasal. And I'm going to, again, copy this down. So we have 20. Nank. Or Nank in 20. So N. Nanko. Wild animal. Nacha. Pet. Na. Meat. N. Nanko. Nangha, Nangha, bear. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. Are those all of our initial nasals? Let's go up and let's do a little look. Do, 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 do. We got 26. I would love to try and figure out the original meanings. I don't know. I don't know just how long this will take. It may end up being a uh, 
depends on how much patience you, uh, my dear viewers, have for it. But I'm game. Um, I think that that's something we have a reasonable chance of doing. Uh, okay, so I think we've got all of the initial nasals. Do what else do we have? Mm. We have. Yeah, we could do the, the tap. So what's uh, that's in thirty four. So let's see if the IPA keyboard will help us with this. Mm, no, maybe this one. No, maybe if I shift this this one. No, I don't know. I'm hopeless. I'm just gonna copy it over. Sorry, everyone. I'll I'll practice with this. I thought it was gonna be a lot easier. <laughs> okay, so we have. A tap here we have loss here we have no surviving um, no surviving reflex in C we have a tap here excuse me the tap here and then we have um, looks like we have loss in E so this is 34 I'm going to be streaming for two hours today, so we've got 90 minutes left. Um, I should probably cut in, uh, or just over 90 minutes because I was five minutes late to start, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to cut things too much. I want to make sure we get four kind of solid chunks out of this, um, and then, oh, oh, you're right, yeah, I miss, uh, I misnumbered that 35. So in 34 we have uh, a somewhat similar situation. And I'll have to put in a cut for YouTube in about five minutes, but I want to make sure we have accomplished something before we do that. So here we we get um, we see what happens to this tap in C when the word is not lost. Okay, um, good. Are there any assurance that we've missed? L We are on, I'm only looking in column A to begin with. I'm going to have to go look in the other columns to see if there are any sonorants that survived only there. Um, let's see. Let's do that now, actually. So we have got lots of interesting stuff here, but nothing new for our sonorant party. Actually, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, talk, <laughs> column A is toxic. Um, so we've got our approximate here. Loss and W. Hey, Mishwa. How goes? Welcome. You can witness the utter destruction of me by a proto-language or by the failure to, uh, <laughs> to reconstruct a proto-language. And also you can witness my destruction by this IPA keyboard layout. Okay, and so then we have 47. And do we get anything different here? Uh, loss. Okay, no, it's the same. So then let's look over at column C. Okay, so here we have any new sonorants, any new sonorants. Doesn't look like it. Hmm. All right. 
right. Column D, this, this bears the unmistakable influence of Quain because I see tones. Quain's going to have a hard time shaking that association. Um, nothing. Oh no, is this? Is this? Is that a rotocized E? A high tone rotocized E? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Um, so looking at the size of this problem, I think we're going to do this in two parts, at least, on two days. One, me going in today and give, you know, giving it the old uh, college try, as the saying goes. And then I will go off and do a, li a little bit of work on my own and come back and we'll try and do a, a final attempt at it. I think that's probably the best format for this. Oh dear, okay. I think we've got all of the initial sonorants. Okay, so let's let's reconstruct some things. I think we're in a position to do that already for this subset. Uh, how much space do I have? Not a lot. Let's see if I can... So I think for the, let's just say, this, we'll call this the proto. Um, I think we're dealing with, I'm comfortable reconstructing L here in 14 and 13. Um, the nasals are a bit harder. Let's skip them for now. I'm comfortable um, I'm comfortable uh, pausing M. I just saw a question. Sotten, can the color of the letters in the definition be a different color than the phonetic forms? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Um, what would be something that would show up well? You know, maybe I'll, what I'll do, I'll put in a cut here. And um, let's just finish this. I'll put in a cut. And then while I'm off screen, uh, I will monkey with that and then... Okay, so then N uh, in 20, I think that's fairly uncontroversial. I think we're more likely to lose the tap than to gain it. So I would reconstruct initial taps here and here. And um, our, our labiodental approximant, not a sound that I, I use very often or come across very often myself. Um, uh, we will reconstruct here. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, uh, what, what the likelihood of um, either change. So labiodental to labiovelar or vice versa, I'm not sure which is more likely, so I'm just going to go with majority rules for now. Um, and yeah, okay, and then we have to decide what to do with these uh, these nasals here, but I'm gonna put in a cut before we do that so that our YouTube audience uh, has a chance to, well, get on with their lives. <laughs> um, and these are a bit more bite-sized. So let's go back to the full screen friends thank you so much for joining us we are going to continue this in the next video so uh, stay tuned until then and uh, otherwise heed the advice hydrate and stretch <laughs>